Hey there, it's Lori here. I'm stopping in today with the craft of the day for Camp Create over at My Favorite Things. Today's topic is Magnificent Masking. I'm going to use this Ink It Ink It Do masking paper um, to do a quick and easy stencil um, with some ink blending on a card base. So I'm going to use the Dainty Scallop Cover Up die with the masking paper to cut out a mask for my card front. After I've got that peeled up, I'm just going to lay that on this piece of cardstock, and it doesn't have to be straight because I'm going to go in and do the ink blending and then I'll cut the card front later. This is my workspace. I just thought I'd share this with you. It's a um, divider from a cropper hopper. It makes for a great cover for your workspace and it just makes for a really easy cleanup when you do ink blending. So I've got my three distress inks and my little package here of all of my uh, blending sponges and basically what I'm going to do is just work with the scallops on the front of this card just kind of working at an angle with each with each color so my three colors are twisted citron dusty concord and peacock feathers and again I'm just going to start really lightly in one corner and I'm just kind of working my way up the card kind of at an angle I usually start really light and I go back in and add more just for a little darker edge and then I also go back in a second time to blend the colors in together. So you'll see that I'm going on to the blue. This is the peacock feathers starting off of the card and then blending onto the card so you don't get those big spongy blotches. This masking paper is really nice. I really was putting a lot of pressure down as I was blending and it doesn't come up at all. The other nice thing about it is when you do go to peel the masking paper off of your card front, it is not stuck down so hard that it rips your card front. It comes off really easy, but it stays down so nicely. I'm going to go back in with the blue here and blend back into the dusty concord just to pull those colors together. You can see how the piece of cropper hopper that I have laying on my workspace is getting a little bit of that ink on there. That really makes for an easy cleanup. I can just pick the entire divider up off of the workspace, which I'm going to do here in just a second, and just move that to the side and I know that there's no ink right there on my actual workspace. So now I'm just going to peel up the masking paper. It comes off, like I said, so nicely and it gives you just that really white crisp image underneath. I'm going to use my Tim Holtz trimmer and just cut down around the white so the white still frames the image but then I have um, a nice rectangle card front to add to a card base. So now that I have the card front finished I'm just centering it on my card base just to check out to make sure everything's even and I'm going to take a piece of fun foam to add to the back of the card front just for some dimension. I buy this um, fun foam and then I cut it down into four inches by three and three quarter and then just store a stack of that uh, fun foam in my drawer so it's handy to grab. I cut just a little bit off so it would fit right inside the edges of that card front and then I, I find that ATG is the best uh, to stick the fun foam down. So now I'm going to add the card front to the card base just by centering it there with that ATG on the back that stuff will hold pretty tight. So in order to anchor my sentiment I'm actually going to use the Stitch Jumbo Fishtail Banner Stacks with vellum and then I'm also going to use the Hello There Dynamics with a um, white die cut hello. So I'm just going to take a little bit of ATG onto this banner die just right across the top and then I'm going to line it up in the top center of the card. I love the way vellum looks when you've got that blended color behind. It kind of mutes the color but still you can tell that the vellum is there and it's a fun way to anchor a sentiment. So I've got my sticky tweezers. If you've seen my videos you know I love to use Elmer's spray adhesive. I'm going to just uh, shake this up and I hold this over my trash can to spray the back and then my tweezers just guide that sentiment right down so it's centered on the on the vellum banner. 
after a couple seconds to give that to dry, I'm going to curl up the vellum banner a little bit just so it doesn't lay flat. I like the banner to have a little bit of dimension. If you just take your fingers and just kind of rub down while kind of folding it up, if you can see how I'm doing that, it kind of helps that banner to lift off the card front without giving a crease in your vellum. And I'm doing the same thing with the tails there. I decided we need a little bit more sparkle on the front of the card, so I'm going to take some sequins and add those to the front. I use little post-it notes for almost like a little palette for my uh, glue, and I've used the Tombow Mono Liquid Glue, squirt a little bit on a post-it note, and then I have a um, jewel picker-upper from Hobby Lobby that one of my friends told me about, and I'm going to add sequins to the front of the banner. This part usually takes me a while. I never know where to put the sequins. Um, but this time I thought I'm just going to keep it simple and add three sequins to the card front. So with this little picker upper, I grab one sequins, dab it into the glue, and then I blot off extra glue so you don't get a big clump on your card front. I've added one sequins to the bottom right, and then I'm going to add two just because I can't ever add an even number. It always has to be an odd number um, to the top there. And that really finishes off the card. It gives it a little bit of sparkle. So I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video and I hope um, you walk away with a couple of tips uh, for your craft of the day. Um, don't forget you can leave a comment on this video for a prize. It's a $15 voucher to My Favorite Things. If you do participate in each craft of the day for all five days, you will be eligible to win the grand prize of $150 a voucher to the store. So, fun prizes this week. I hope you've been inspired, and I can't wait to see what you create. Thanks so much for stopping in.